Hey, Facebook. Hey, Instagram. Pardon me. I'm still getting my cameras set up here. Um, happy mid-April. What's up, y'all? How's it going? How's your month so far? How's your human? How's your heart? How's your, I don't know, whatever the fuck else is going on? <laughs> uh, it's a gorgeous afternoon here in Los Angeles. Mm. I want to make sure that this camera is steady because it's going to drive me crazy. Um, Tracy, you know who you are. Thank you so much for the awesome thing that your husband sent me as the video set up to um, uh, use for recording my videos, but I need an extra cord to set up my external microphone. So I'm not using it today, but I'll be using it soon. Um, and I'll be giving you a proper shout out once I do. Anyway, that's not what this video is about. Hi, everybody. What's going on? Um, here we are at the end of April almost, what, 30 days, half September, April, just so we've got about 12 days left. I made it in time to call this the mid-month update. <laughs> so much going on, so many changes, so much to discuss. So this video is gonna be a combo of kind of personal update, um, what's going on with Andrew Martin Energy, and then also the monthly update of what's going on energetically, which I don't know why I need to make the distinction because the two are always woven together anyway. Do you like my fancy handwork? <laughs> my jazz hands? Um, the two are always woven together anyway, so I don't know why I even make that distinction. I guess I'm just, you know, taking a moment to ground in and, and get going and wait for the, the Holy Spirit to move me. Um, I got to get to my notes here, make sure that I'm sharing with you everything I want to share with you. Mm. The first thing that I want to chat about real quick is... Big, big changes coming to Andrew Martin Energy, coming to how I share my content, coming to how you access my content. Um, and, you know, that's what really what February and March was about for me personally. It was really looking at my practice and saying, okay, like what is sustainable in terms of the model that I've created? What needs to go? What needs to shift? What's ready to expand? What's ready to be taken away? I mean, it has been really like kind of reconfiguring everything. And the first thing that's going to happen is as of May 1st, so in 12 days, my Patreon is coming back. Patreon and slash Andrew Martin Energy. It's actually secretly live right now. So if you go and you can start to check it out, um, Obviously, you need to figure out if you want to subscribe or whatever, but um, officially it's going to be launched on May 1st, and it's going to be so exciting. I'm really, really excited about this evolution in my practice and what I offer, and it's definitely going to create more of a community around Andrew Martin Energy and all of us who join under the Andrew Martin Energy umbrella Um and it's just got to change. You know, that was one of the biggest lessons that I learned. And it, was, it wasn't a lesson. It was a, a reminder, right? I mean, don't you feel like, give me a thumbs up. Give me a heart emoji. Give me a poop emoji, a unicorn, a unicorn poop, a unipoop. <laughs> give me a van emoji and then a water emoji so we can be in the van down by the river. <laughs> if you have felt like a lot of what is surfacing, you're like, oh, this was kind of the same deal. Like, isn't it, to me, the most interesting thing about where we have been the past few months, especially since the beginning of the year, is that the lessons came in a new package. The lessons seemed to arrive in something that felt so unfamiliar and felt so foreign and felt so out there, right? It was like, oh my God, this leap feels so big or this pain or this wound feels so deep or this, you know, revelation or whatever it is feels so big and monumental, and then what we realize underneath all of it is it's just the same lesson, right? What's the lesson? You are the creator. What's the lesson? If you don't understand it from your human perspective, it's because the decisions and the choices are being made by you at a higher non-physical level. What's the lesson? It's all love. It always has been love. It always will be love. And that's the only thing that's ever real and that ever lasts is love. But the way that these lessons were presented to us this month are really, really powerful and really profound and really fucking confusing. <laughs> Let's be honest. For me, it felt like a freaking slap in the face. You know, and that's what I, I, you know, way back in the day in the very beginning, I used to talk a lot this, you know, this idea of love and light, love and light, love and light. Like, okay, girl, I get it. But 
it's not all happy, flowy unicorns and you know sunshine and rainbows. Sometimes love is that smack against the head to wake you up. You know, sometimes light is the lightning bolt that strikes and like destroys your whole life so that you can rebuild. And that's really what a lot of this has felt like for me anyway. So Andrew Martin energy is changing. The way that I present and share is changing. What I offer is changing. There's going to be a couple of phases, but the first phase and the most important one to know about is that as of May 1st, Patreon's coming back and that is where I'm going to be focusing a lot of my time and attention and energy. But And you'll see exactly how it rolls out um, starting on May 1st. And I'm going to do another chat um, between now and then so that we can chat about it. Maybe I can answer any questions that you have. But what I realize is that the lessons that came, even though it was the same issue wrapped in a new lesson, it really, for me anyway, felt in so many ways like kind of the final engagement with a lot of this old stuff. I think really where we are right now is that the mind, the sort of the illusory self, the, the, the sort of the false self, because the personality is really the false self, right? The personality is the role that the actor plays. Meryl Streep was, you know, what's her name? Miranda Priestly in The Devil Wears Prada for that brief period of time. But that's not who she really is. She embodied that and she inhabited that role. But it's the false self. It's an illusion. And that's really where we are. Is the false self is the human perspective, the human idea, the human personality. That doesn't mean that it's not valid. And that doesn't mean that we can't enjoy it, inhabit it, and have a great time with it. But ultimately, it's a brief blip on the radar between, you know, chapters. And so what we're really being asked to do is really pay attention. This is what we talked about in the beginning of April, right? What does your human need? Is your creator self-invested? Is all of you present and accounted for in the moment? And if not, that's something to be curious about. Because the creator self isn't really invested in the old stuff. The creator self isn't interested in another rerun. The creator self is like, all right, girl, if you need another round on the merry-go-round to learn this lesson, go for it. I'm going to hang out over here on the bench and eat my popcorn and watch the show. <laughs> you know, and that's what I talked about when the creator self sort of divests itself, for lack of a better term. The creator self sort of withdraws from the experience, not because it's going away, not because we did something wrong, but because it's where the observer's perch exists, right? The observer's perch, I think of in many ways as the lifeguard chair. And the lifeguard is watching, is observing, is making sure that everyone is safe, everyone's doing what they need to be doing to have a good time or whatever they came here to do. And just as long as everyone is safe and everyone is playing by the rules, that's sort of the perspective. It's like, I'm just gonna watch. I'm gonna see if my creator self has learned how to swim yet. And that's really where we are, is we can't sit in the lifeguard chair of our own experience until we have learned how to swim. And swimming means getting in there and feeling it. Swimming means getting in there and acknowledging it. Swimming means getting in the pool and digging around to look for the thing that you lost. Swimming means I got to dive in and I got to allow this to happen. I got to allow myself to be a part of this experience. You know, what is that quote? Enlightenment is when the wave realizes it is the ocean, but the wave still has its own experience that it is a part of. The wave still is the wave, right? You are still the human self. You are still embodying and inhabiting this human experience. So the human is your responsibility. And if you don't know how to get in there and create a space where you can feel what you need to feel and learn what you need to learn and go through what you need to go through, you're just going to continue to swim around in that one little part of the pool until you actually just surrender and dive in and let yourself have the experience that you need to have. And in many ways, I feel like where we are right now is it's, it's what I call itchy butt. It's called that school butt, right? Like think about when you were done, you were sort of at the end of your high school, right? Your senior year in high school or grade 12, for those of you, those weird Canadians or <laughs> friends in the UK. Um, you know, when you're in your senior year in high school and you're a week away from summer and you're waiting for that bell to ring for the final time so you can just escape and you're just like, oh God, I can't sit still, right? It's like, oh, I just want to be out. I have all this energy. I have all this like excitement and these ideas and these things. I want to go out and live my life. 
And I started to feel that a couple of days ago. I posted this on my Instagram of like, am I just being lazy? Like, have I used this idea of waiting for inspiration just as an excuse not to do anything? And I sort of created it. <laughs> Give me a thumbs up or a heart emoji if you're with me on this because I cannot be the only one that asks this question of like, am I just a lazy fucker who is like using this excuse of waiting for inspiration, waiting for spirit to come and tap me on the shoulder so that I can just get away with doing like one thing a day and being like, oh, well, that was my day, y'all. I'm exhausted. I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> but... I don't really think I'm being lazy and I really do trust that nudge. I really do trust that little ink. And I know that it always comes when it's time. And I started to feel it this morning. I started to feel the sense of like, cause the full moon is tomorrow. This is a big full moon. This is a lot of completion. This is an exclamation point in many ways on what we've been going through the past few months. But I started to feel that this morning of like, okay, it's time to start creating some structure around my life again. It's time to create a little bit of discipline. It's And not discipline of like, just do this for the sake of doing it. No, this is like, what does my human need? Right now, my human needs to get back into his physical health and get back into his physical wellness. So I've been going to the gym regularly again. My human needs, my body needs a massage. I just posted this on my Instagram. So I'm looking for someone in the LA area that does like myofacial release because I feel like there's all this stuff that my body is purging that's just sort of floating on the surface of the water. And I need to have someone get in there and like really release some stuff. So that's what my human needs. I've got this deadline of May 1st approaching. And so it's time for me to start really looking at like, okay, what are the steps that I need to take? Let me write a checklist of things I need to do before now on May 1st when Patreon relaunches. So this is what I'm talking about when we're tending to our human. And it's not a one and done thing. This is what I think it's really important for us to really remember and to realize is not one thing is the answer. Not one person holds all of the pieces of the puzzle. Not one experience is going to be the thing that you go ting and then it's done and then I never, you know, it's like it's all a pro, a pro <laughs> I can't even talk. It's all a process. It is a progressive experience. One experience gives you a bit and then another experience gives you a bit and then another experience gives you a bit and then you read something or you hear something or you have an experience that gives you another bit and then you go up to your observer's porch and you look at it all and you go, oh, okay, I'm starting to see some connections here. I'm starting to see the dots connect. I'm starting to see things make sense. And part of why it is so important to use this opportunity that we are given right now. This corridor that we have been in, as intense as it has been, is a gift, you guys. It is a gift because between now and the end of 2020, for the next year and a half, things are going to continue to ramp up and this tide of energy is going to continue to rise and a rising tide raises all boats. So it not, it's not so much about, oh my God, I got to get down. I got to make sure I'm on the boat. You're already on the boat. Right? Like we were talking about a couple of weeks ago, you're already on the roller coaster. But the question now is, are you doing the work? Are you using the tools? This is the key. I'm going to ask you again. Are you using your tools? Are you listening to yourself? Are you feeling yourself? Are you tuning into that spot? Are you connecting to your higher guidance? Are you allowing the things that want to go? Are you allowing them to go? Are you allowing the things that want to come in? Are you allowing them to come in? Or are you at least being curious about them and opening that door crack and saying, hang on a second, we're gonna have a conversation before I decide to let you into my field, but I can be curious about you engage and engage with you to figure that out. Here's a really important thing that I think we need to acknowledge. And I hear this so often. People saying, well, I don't, fear, I don't hear my guides. Where's my guidance? Where's my sign? Where's my messages? Where's my intuition? I don't know. I don't hear it. I don't feel it. I don't see it. Give me a thumbs up or a heart emoji if this is you. If you feel like I can't, I don't know. I don't hear them. I don't feel them. There's, I, I'm, there's no connection there. The good news is, there is a connection there. Otherwise, you would not be alive. Okay? This is the T. People ask me all the time, Andrew, am I on my path? The answer is always yes. If you are incarnate, if you are in physical form, you are, still, you are on your path. Period. 
Now the question is, are you on the path deliberately? Are you on the path consciously? Do you like the direction that your path is taking you? Do you remember that you are the one who is the one driving the bus, that you're the creator and that the path is not defining to you? You are allowing yourself to move down the path because here's the thing, the connection that you seek is already here. It's just, it's covered up by all of this noise, by all of this noise. One of the key components to connecting with your guidance, to hearing them and to feeling them, it only happens through the emotional energetic field. You cannot think yourself into connection. You cannot think yourself into receiving guidance. You cannot think yourself into receiving insight. That's not how it works. That is like trying to get your email through a calculator. It's not what this was built for. So until we drop into our heart, until we drop into our emotional field, until we allow the fullness of all that we are begin to move through us, the lights are on but nobody's home. This is what we talked about in the April Energy Gathering, owning your space and claiming your space. And by the way, I have the replay available for download. It was incredible. We were working with the energies of the creator self and this was basically, it was sort of like a guided meditation slash energy session slash like proclamations. And we even got a homework assignment at the end, which was mind blowing. It was so amazing because you know I love a practical application. You know I love a tool and that's really what this is about. You got the tools. Are you listening? Are you using them? Are you paying attention? Are you just showing up to watch these videos for the fun of it because you think I'm funny and I make you laugh? Well, that's great. But if I was a fucking stand-up comedian, that would be one thing, but I'm not. So unless you are allowing your life to show you what the tools are to point you in the direction, and if you are not paying attention to the things that are in your face, wake up. They're always pointing you in a direction. They're always offering something up to you. And until we have learned how to access that place through feeling, through emotion, through energy and vibration, it's just going to continue to be a foreign language. It's just going to continue to be something that we are so, I swear I don't hear it. I don't know. It's not there. And every single time that I work with someone who tells me they can't hear it, they're not connected, they don't have guides, they don't receive it, through enough investigation and enough dialogue, it becomes clear every single time that the, the communication is already there. You're just not paying attention. Because it doesn't look or sound or feel like what the mind thinks it should. And how the fuck would the mind know? <laughs> that is not the mind's realm. The mind is bound by the laws of the material realm. That is why the mind is always going to be offering up a diet of fear porn. Because the mind is bound by the laws of the physical realm... And within the physical realm is where these dire consequences exist, right? Danger, fear, injury, sickness, illness, all of these things exist in the physical realm. It's the matrix. And when I am only living through the mind and when I am allowing the mind to drive the bus, when I am a passenger on the train that the mind is driving... I will only ever be connected to what is happening at the physical realm, which is 3D. That is the third dimension, my friends. And if we are only drawing from, creating from, listening to, paying attention to, and regurgitating back into the physical realm, we're never going to evolve, we're never going to grow, and we're never going to see the truth that we are. And the pain that we feel, the suffering that we feel, the anguish that we feel is only ever evidence that we are believing something that is not true. The pain, emotion, the, the feeling of, oh God, that is because this is trying to tell me something that this does not agree with. And this is the primary reality. This is the secondary reality. And until you accept that this is what creates all of this, 
you're never going to be able to move beyond. You're never going to be able to activate that observer's perch and go, oh, wow, look at that. Because think about this. If you're trudging through the uncharted brush of the jungle, don't you think that the easiest way to make yourself through, make your way through that jungle where there is no path and there isn't, you know, you're in the thick of it, right? You're just in the jungle. I don't know which way is forward. It all looks the same. Well, guess what? What if you were able to rise up and take a bird's eye perspective and see from this perspective, right? What if you had a drone that was flying and saying, hey, if you go up here to the left, this thing looks like this. If you go over here to the right, move in this direction. But because we're only ever invested, we don't ever stop to access that level of awareness because here is the thing. So imagine, right? Just imagine that we've got these barriers, right? And we've got 3D, which creates a barrier. And then we've got 3D and a buff. So 4D, 5D, and then on into whatever D. <laughs> I love the D. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I digress. <laughs> this ain't that kind of video. Um, so if I'm only in 3D and that's all that I believe that exists and that's all that I believe that there is, I am just recycling through this fear, this fear porn plane where everything is a reaction, everything is a crisis, everything puts me in panic mode, everything is I'm a victim, everything is just, and all I'm doing is drawing from the same well of fear and regurgitating more fear into it and then we have all this concentration of fear and it's not sustainable. And in order to sustain myself in this place, the only way that I can do it is to steal resources from other people. Hello, this is why we have CEOs getting $20 million packages when the employees of the company that they work for are making $14 an hour or $7 an hour or whatever. Because until I open up and access a higher level of awareness, the only thing that I have access to is what is already here in the physical plane. It is dead. It is defunct. It is void of life. It is like the bare minimum allowance of consciousness that I need just to have a living experience and nothing more than that. So in order to be the biggest fish in the pond, the only way that I can do that when I'm working in a finite system, because that's the other thing, 3D is finite. In 3D, we have the experience of linear time where I'm born, I have a life, and then I die. And the only way that I can move beyond what I have and get bigger and bigger and bigger is one of two ways. I either steal from other people, I either take resources from this 3D illusion that I have locked myself into because it's finite, it's scarce, it's lack, it's competition. The other way is I, I create a crack in that 3D ceiling. And now guess what? Now I get to move into this higher frequency. Now there's fresh water coming into the well. Now there's something that's coming from an infinite place. Now there's something that's coming from a place that is always renewing. Now there's something that's coming from a place that is always expanding and growing. The only way you're going to access infinite consciousness is if you get the fuck out of here. Because it doesn't exist up here. This is the thing that processes it. This is the thing that tries to make sense of it and fit it into a structure that we call the human earthbound experience. But this isn't the one doing any of the sending and receiving. This is just a data processor. So, if you wanna be able to rise above your experience and take the bird's eye view and go, oh, okay, if I go over here and then if I go over here and if I do that, all right, go swoop back down. Now we got the intel, now let's take action. As we crack the ceiling on the 3D trap, because that's the other thing, right? This 3D experience at Earth School was created with these rules in place. It was created specifically to be a place where we have the opportunity to have the experience that we have. One of forgetting, one of not knowing, one of panic and fear and suffering and all of that, you know, also joy and love and happiness and all those things too. But if you want to get to that place where you are really seeing yourself as you truly are, when you can live and own that truth that you are the infinite powerful creator 
Now I'm taking insight and information from way up here. It comes down into this, you know, experience called Andrew and suddenly I'm a fucking magician. Suddenly I'm Neo in the matrix who is bending things to his will and, you know, and everyone around you is going, what the hell did you do? Oh, he's the exception. Wouldn't it be nice? Oh, those people over there have it easy, but I do not. Oh, I can never be what they are. I'm just not that way. If you say so. So April, and as we are moving towards the end of this year and 2020, I mean, if y'all think this is crazy, hang on. We are just getting started. But the higher you allow your vibration to rise, the less bound you are and affected by the things that are happening down on the ground. When I exist primarily up here in my consciousness and my awareness, then I can watch what's happening and I can observe and I can participate in that way. But I am not in the thick of it. I'm not in the mosh pit. I'm not getting thrown all over the place because remember, the pendulum swings from good to bad, from happy to sad, from ebb to flow, from lack to abundance. And we on the pendulum as a human go, oh, well, here we go again. Here we go again. Oh, look at me. I'm happy. Now I'm not. But guess what? It's the master that realizes that they are the one holding the pendulum. So now it's a whole different show. So when something doesn't make sense to your mental mind, the 98 pound weakling that really thinks it's like the 300 pound gorilla, poor little thing, the mind has just been really inflated to think that he's something that he's not. And that's kind of the metaphor for the masculine, you know, we're seeing the end of this old imbalanced masculine model. Sorry, dude, we lied to you. You never were the powerful creator that you've been told to be. And we kind of had to turn you into a bully and a brute. And you got really angry. And there's a lot of fucking disservices. Been met. It's the same thing with the mind. This poor mind has just had such a rude awakening to realize that it's not the one in charge. It never has been. It just was given a temporary opportunity to believe that it was. And let's see what the mind can do when it's left to be the one in charge. Well, we can see what the fuck happened there. <laughs> and I'm not demonizing the mind. The mind, we need the mind. That's how we get shit done in the physical realm. Without the ego and the masculine self, I wouldn't have a way to roll up my sleeves and create. But it is the feminine self, the non-physical, the intuitive, emotional, sensing self, this watery, flowy, you know, un, um, undefined self that is the one that calls all the shots. It is the feminine that rises and says, this is what we're going to do. This is the inspiration. This is how we're going to, you know, we're going to bring everyone to the table. And then we give the masculine self those nuggets to run with to create something in form. And all of that's really wonderful and really exciting, isn't it? But none of it means anything if y'all aren't doing the work. I am not invested at all in whether or not somebody learns how to create a better life for themselves. I can't be. I want everyone to remember how powerful they are. That is my job is to remind you of how powerful you are, but I can't be responsible for it. I can't be accountable to it. I can't be hanging on watching the comments and ooh, did she get it? Of course, I hope that you do, but that's not up to me. That's not up to me. I have nothing to do with whether or not you decide to create a life that feels like paradise for you. I have nothing to do with that. The best I can do is do a drive-by your building site and say, here's some tools, here's some materials, here's some ideas, here's a building plan, go for it. And whether or not you decide to pick up the tools and use them, that is entirely up to you. And the beauty of it is, is you can do it or not. You can do it or not. That is the beauty of free will. But haven't you learned by now that when the creator self is knocking at the door and we don't listen, things just get suckier and suckier until we finally listen up and pay attention and open the door? You have everything you need to begin right now. You have everything you need to begin to recreate it. Here's another difference between the master. And I talked about this, I think it was like in February or March when we were talking about the $5, right? 
If I am standing in the belief that I am a victim, that I am helpless, that I am powerless, that I can't do it, $5 to me is a point of desperation. It's like, oh my God, I only have $5 left. I'm going to starve. I'm going to die. I'm going to be homeless. I, I can't. I, that's all I have. This is it. That is me just living and creating and breathing and believing only from the 3D model. But when I step forward in my fullness, when I allow my fullness to descend and begin to remind me and reprogram my vessel to know the truth, to live the truth, to be the truth, when I'm standing in that perspective, $5 is the building of an empire. $5 is the beginning of something great. It is the master who can take a look around at their environment and honestly accept, wow, look at what I created for myself. Man, I have created quite a mess. Wow, I set quite a trap for myself, didn't it? Because that's what's also happening. Our creator self is saying, all right, you, you know what? Where we are in the timeline, there just aren't that many get out, of free, get out of jail free cards left. And this is not designed to put the fear of God in you or to freak you out. It's just there is shit that needs to happen. There's stuff that's already in process and in play. And if you are not willing to pay attention now, when are you going to pay attention? So begin where you are with whatever you have because I promise you it is all you need. Because the most amazing thing happens. Luck and miracles to me are just when our direction aligns with our desire. When we finally get out of our own way and go, my way isn't really working anymore. I have been bleeding myself dry to try to get this thing to happen and it just won't happen. So what if I just put up my hands, push back from the table and said, all right, spirit, okay, angel in the sky, okay, creator self, whatever it is that you call that out there, show me another way because I clearly don't get it. And that shift can happen so fast it will make your head spin. I promise you, it doesn't take as long as this wants you to believe. And let's be honest, the mind isn't interested in happiness and fulfillment. The mind is only interested in safety. And in safety is, if safety is my own agenda, guess what? I talked about this before too. The price of admission to the comfort zone is the death of growth and evolution and expansion. You can't have both. You got to trade one for the other. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a heart emoji. Give me a unicorn pooping in a van down by the river. <laughs> if you're ready just to say yes. And this is, the, this is the other thing. The mind is never going to be ready, you guys. If you are waiting for the mind to go, okay, it's cool. I'm going to chill out now. I'm not going to freak you out anymore. Go ahead. It's never going to happen. It's your, this is the other thing. Your human needs you to retrain that ego self, to retrain that mind so that now the masculine self, the action doing hands in the dirt self now is on equal footing. We are peers. We are in balance. We need the masculine and the feminine. And do I have to say it again? This has nothing to do with gender. If you got a penis, you have, you have the divine feminine inside of you. If you have a vagina, you have the divine masculine energy inside of you. So we both have all of it, regardless of biology and what's going on below the waist. This is the opportunity for you to step forward and say yes to the life that you already agreed to live. My job is to remind you of that. My job is to help you remember how powerful you are. But if y'all aren't ready to dive into the pool, I can't do my job. Source can't do its job. Here's a reminder. In every single moment, with every single choice, only one of two things is happening. I'm either moving towards my truth or away from it. And when I am moving away from my truth, I have essentially chosen to turn my back on myself, on the truth, on the light. We are never forsaken. We are never denied. We are given the opportunity to deny ourselves and to forsake ourselves and to turn our back on that unconditional flow. We can certainly step out of it, but it's always there. 
And when I am moving away from my truth, I have essentially put my helpers, my non-physical helpers into quarantine because what resistance brings the lesson. So when I resist and I back away from the truth, it's like, okay, Andrew needs a lesson to remind him again. He's not sure. He's not ready. He doesn't know whatever. So I am given an opportunity to continue to move away from my truth so I can learn the lesson because it's got to get as bad as it has to get to, for me to wake up, right? We've all done that. But my higher self, my creator self, my guides, my angels, my teachers, my helpers, my watchers, they cannot help you move away from yourself. Why would spirit, source, the universe ever help you deny yourself? You are given the opportunity to do so should you choose it. But when you do, whoa, that 3D ceiling comes crashing back down and now all of a sudden I'm only learning and living and creating from this plane, from the physical plane and that where it's always a shit show and that's just the reality. But when I turn and I pivot now back towards my truth, now I have suddenly allowed all of the non-physical helpers that I have to come back to my aid, to reunite with me, to rejoin me, and now we're cooking with gas and now we're moving forward and now we're co-creating. Now it's not lesson time. And if I need a lesson, I need a lesson. It doesn't matter, you know, I don't want, this is the thing, I don't want you to take this as an indictment or a judgment of you. If you need the lesson, you need the lesson. If you're resistant, you need the resistance. Hello? That's what my March video was all about, was me biting and fighting and resisting tooth and nail where I got to the point where I didn't even have enough money to pay my bills and my rent because I was so resistant to what wanted to move through me because I was looking at it through here. But the minute I stopped and said, you know what? I need help. I'm going to ask for help. And I got help. Vulnerability is the quickest antidote to being stuck up here. The minute that you allow yourself to say, I don't know, I'm scared, I'm lost, I feel alone, and I don't know. <sighs> then you just sort of slide right back down into yourself. You meet yourself where you are, you begin that merging process, and that's when all the help and the support and the love and the abundance begins to flow again because we finally unclenched <sighs> and we just let it in. It's already here. It's already here. It's just we're in the process now of removing everything that covers up the truth, that covers up what is already here, that gets in the way of it. So just allow it. And I get it, it's scary. And I get it, it's daunting. And I get it, it's terrifying to ask the question of what's on the other side of this. But what's the alternative? Continuing to use all of your energy, all of your resources just to maintain a life that you don't really want in the first place. So the master can look at their, you know, external reality, the secondary reality and go, wow, man, I created quite a pickle for myself. But when I'm in my master space, when I am coming from that higher place, when I'm allowing my bigger self to be the one that informs me and inspires me and guides me. This is not a trap. This is not a prison. This is liberation. This is an opportunity to recreate. And I can say, all right, I don't really like what's going on here. This is not my thing. This is not my jam. I don't feel comfortable. I don't feel happy. I don't feel at ease. So what can I do to recreate? But the false self, the victim self, the disempowered self goes, oh, my life sucks. And there's nothing I can do about it. I just got to let it be shitty because for whatever reason it is, and I'm a bad person and I am this and I am that and whatever woe is me and we sink deeper and deeper into it. And again, if that's where you are, then it's okay. That's where you are. But you got to let yourself be there. At what point do we stop holding ourselves hostage and say, well, when I'm this, then I'll be okay. When I have that, then I'll be at ease. When I finally am over there, then I can be happy and be at peace. What if I just said, you know what? I'm going to find a way to be at peace with what is going on right now. I'm going to find a way to say yes to what is happening right now. And saying yes to it and accepting it and acknowledge it doesn't mean that I am going to, that I want to perpetuate it. But I cannot change it until I acknowledge what it is in the first place. So I'm going to ask you again, are you doing your work? Are you invested? 
and I mean all of you, is all of you present? Are you allowing your creator self to move through you and co-create with you and be your co-pilot? Or are you still stuck up here convinced that the only way it's going to be successful or a good or, how, or whatever is if it looks and feels and tastes and smells and all, just like, you know, the mind is not the one that gets to decide. The mind is the one that takes the higher impulse and the higher information that comes through and says, hey, this is what I think we should do. And we go, oh yeah, that feels right. That feels true. Man, this is like, yes, I'm like goosebumps, a house on fire. Like I feel the rush of the universe moving through me. Even though I might be nervous, I might be anxious because I'm making a big step and I'm making a leap and I'm leaving the comfort zone, but this feels right. Say yes to that. Say yes to that. So that's really what the rest of this month is about, is using your tools, being mindful and practical and deliberate with it, showing up and being honest with yourself. And if you don't like what's currently going on, and if you're not happy with what you have created, that's an opportunity to throw your hands up and say, okay, I acknowledge that I have gotten myself to this point. I acknowledge that whether by consciously or unconsciously, deliberately or by default, I have created this experience. And I want something different. So I step back and I say, all right, spirit. Okay, big Andrew. Show me how. Show me what else is possible. Show me what I am capable of. Show me what is ready to go so that I can get it out of the way, so that I can release it, so that I can see this deeper layer of truth. Show me another way. What else is possible? What else can happen? Just a reminder, all of my services are currently reduced in rate. So all of my hour, excuse me, all of my hourly sessions and my mentorship program, go to andrewmartin.energy. You can check out the sessions tab. You can check out the mastery mentorship tab. You can also check out the donate tab if you want to share some love financially. Andrew Martin Energy on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Patreon. Again, May 1st, Patreon's coming back. You can go check it out right now, although it's not in its final stage, but you can take a look around and see. It's going to be amazing. Like I, what I really, this vision that I have for the Patreon is just creating this landscape, creating this community where we can all gather together and have this experience that is deliberate and mindful, that is created especially to do the work that we came here to do. And the work that I came here to do is to remind you of who you are. And that's what I offer up. That's what I lay on the table is a way for you to unleash that creator self, to find the connection that already exists and to make it stronger and to make it bolder and to make it more powerful so that you get to the point where you don't even question, nope, this is what I gotta do. I feel it, I know it, I trust it, and that's what I'm gonna do, period. So I can help if you're ready to do the work. I can help if you're willing. And that's all that you need to do is be willing. Just show up. Just show up and spirit and you and I will co-create the rest. You don't have to know how, you don't have to know when, you don't have to know who, you don't have to know anything. All you have to do is show up. So book a session if you want an hour of guidance or book the mentorship program if you want a seven weeks uh, experience of transformation. I'm talking going from this level. I mean, it's all about leveling up. And if you're ready, you're ready. And if you're not, that's okay too. And when you're ready, you will be. And in the meantime, we can continue to gather here a couple of times a month. But until you use the tools, nothing's going to change. And in order to sit in that lifeguard chair, in order to find the observer's perch, you got to learn how to swim in your own funk first. <laughs> that's it. I'm starving. I'm going to go eat before my next client. I love you, love you, love you. Thank you so much for watching. Keep your eyes open. The next couple of weeks, I'm going to be doing another live chat about the Patreon and about the changes. Um, and that's it. I love you guys. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for liking. Thank you for subscribing. Have a fantastic weekend. Mwah! Talk to you. Oh, full moon tomorrow. Enjoy the full moon. Find a ritual. Do something. Burn a candle. Bang a drum. Smoke some sage or <laughs> burn some sage. Whatever. Do something. Just honor it. Even if you just wake up, light a candle and say, I like, I like this candle in honor of the full moon and I allow myself to release whatever it is that I longer need. That's beautiful in and of itself. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.